uh, organizers for inviting me in this meeting. Uh, my talk is about minimal surfaces in spheres. The study of uh, those surfaces was initiated by Calabi in 1967. And uh, I must say that they are far from being understood. Uh, my talk is focused on a class of uh, minimal surfaces, the ones we call exceptional minimal surfaces in spheres, and uh, those are defined in terms of the Hopf differential. I will explain in a minute what uh, Hopf differentials are. Our aim is to uh, get a, a complete characterization of exceptional surfaces. Uh, we'll see in terms of what? Of, what? of some scalar uh, invariance. And then uh, we're going to give three applications. The first application is about the risk condition and the related uh, loss and conjecture. The second uh, application is about uh, should the holomorphic curves in the uh, sphere S6, uh, which, uh, uh, as you probably know, carries a, spe a very special structure. And the last application is about the construction of a polar surface of a given minimal uh, surface. So, uh, at first we have to define those of differentials. It is a series of differentials. The first one is just a well-known Hopf differential. Uh, to this purpose, we need uh, this notion, the notion of oscillating space. So we start with a minimal surface. We always assume that uh, we are in a uh, substantial co-dimension. And uh, we rule at the space of uh, oscillating space of order L, which is a space uh, generated by uh, derivatives of order R to L. And uh, we take the orthogonal complement, uh, which is the... Uh, so-called normal space of order R. Then, the normal space of the uh, minimal surface uh, allows the splitting, where M defend, uh, refers to the last normal space. And, uh, yeah, uh, what about the dimension of the, of the higher normal space? Uh, generically, uh, these spaces are two-dimensional unless uh, the dimension of the sphere is owned, and the last one, of course, in this case, is uh, of dimension uh, one. Then we need the higher fundamental forms. The Hopf differentials are defined in a natural way from the complex structure of the surface and the higher fundamental forms. The higher fundamental forms are defined in this way. We take uh, 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 iterated uh, derivatives and then we project onto the uh, higher normal space of uh, order R. Uh, of course, the first B1 is nothing but the second uh, fundamental form. Uh, now, we complexify everything. Uh, of course, generically, we can speak about the normal bundle the, uh, of order R, and we complexify everything. We have the, complex, the complexified tangent bundle, which splits as usual. As, uh, in this way, is the sum of the uh, eigenspaces of the uh, complex structure. And then we look at the uh, higher fundamental form. And we take the DZ and DZ bar decomposition of the higher fundamental forms. Uh, because of the minimality, it, it turns out that this decomposition is quite simple. There are only two terms. So, uh, what are the differential forms? Uh, by definition, are these forms of type 2L plus 2, 0. And, uh, uh, the question is, what kind of information do these invariants encode for minimal surfaces? Uh, the answer is given here. Uh, actually, they play the role that uh, for Nekel curves just play for uh, curves, in, let's say, in Euclidean space. If you have two minimal surfaces with the same Hopf differential, differentials, then they are uh, congruent. Uh, we uh, know, it is uh, in fact the consequence of the Goddard equation, that the first Hopf differential is always holomorphic. So what about the rest uh, uh, Hopf differentials? Are they holomorphic? Well, it depends. It depends on what? On a notion that figures in the study of minimal surfaces, and this notion is a uh, notion of higher curvature ellipse. Uh, these are just the image of the unit uh, tangent circle under the highest fundamental form. And uh, these are indeed ellipses 
possibly degenerated, but we will always uh, stay away from uh, uh, degenerated uh, points. And uh, an important remark is the following. The zeros of phi r are precisely the points where the ellipse is a, is a circle. It is easy to see that because the zeros of phi r uh, are the points where the, the L plus one zero part of the uh, higher fundamental form is an isotropic vector. And this, of course, means that the ellipse is a circle. Uh, so, uh, what about the holomorphicity? Well, the holomorphicity depends on the eccentricity of those ellipses. Uh, if we have minimal surface, then the Hopf differential, phi 2 up to phi r plus 1, are holomorphic, even only if the higher curvature ellipse have constant eccentricity up to order r. So we have a characterization of the holomorphicity. They are not always holomorphic. Uh, and now, what is the definition of exceptional minimal surfaces? Exceptional minimal surfaces are just the surfaces for which all Hopf differentials are holomorphic. Are there examples? Of course, there are examples. Let's start with the minimal two spheres. They are always, uh, uh, they are exceptional. Indeed, they are differentials, all differential vanish. And this is a consequence of the riemann roch theorem. This was already observed by Calabi and Chern. And uh, these minimal two spheres uh, actually is a part of a wider class of uh, minimal surfaces, the uh, so-called super-minimal surfaces. Some people call them isotopic minimal surfaces, and they have been studied by Calabi, Chen, and Barbosa. There's another uh, class of uh, exceptional minimal surfaces that was introduced in 1995 by Bolton, Petit, and Gundwo, and these are surfaces for which uh, hot differential vices uh, up to the last bad one. Another class of exceptional minimal surfaces is a class of minimal, uh, uh, of flat minimal surfaces, already started by Ken Mocho in 1973. He obtained a complete classification. And the last class of uh, exceptional surfaces is constructed in this way. Let's start with a minimal surface in the three sphere. We have the associated family of minimal surfaces. And then we can start a new minimal surface that sits in this sphere over there. Uh, in this way, as a direct sum uh, with respect to an orthogonal decomposition of the Euclidean space. It turns out that those uh, minimal surfaces are exceptional. Uh, in particular, I must say that this class of minimal surfaces is related to the Ricci condition and the uh, 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 Lawson conjecture. What, what is the risk condition? That, uh, we say that a surface, a two-dimensional manifold, uh, with Gaussian curvature at most one, satisfies the risk condition. If this metric is flat, of course, away from points where the curvature is equal to one. This condition is equivalent to uh, uh, this equation. And uh, what this Lawson conjecture says, every non-flat minimal surface in a sphere which satisfies the risk condition has to be of this form, I mean, uh, splits in this way as the sum of the members of uh, the same associated uh, uh, family. Uh, which is the same, I must say that the H condition uh, means, uh, as already been shown by Lawson, that uh, it is, the surface is local isometric to a minimal surface in S3. So, uh, now we are going to uh, introduce the invariants that actually uh, are used in characterizing all exceptional minimal surfaces. The idea for the invariant uh, arises in this way. If you have a minimal surface and uh, we take an, on an orthogonal frame uh, adapted in such a way that these two vectors span the uh, normal bubble of uh, order R, then using a new basis, of the complexified normal bundle, we have this formula. So I realized from this formula that not only orthonormal bases are useful, but also new bases are useful. And uh, what is the impact of this uh, formula? Uh, we are able to decompose the hop differential in this way, and uh, we now introduce 
the series of invariants that are scalar functions, they are actually uh, the modulus of those complex functions, k, r, plus or minus. Uh, just, just call them as a invariants to make life easier. Uh, so, those invariants, of course, are well defined. They do not depend on the frame. They are well defined functions. And what is the uh, geometric meaning of those uh, functions? Well, uh, it turns out that these uh, invariants are given by this formula. And what is k uh, r and mi r? These are just the length of the semi-axis of the corresponding curvature ellipse. An important remark is the following, of course, which is obvious, that the uh, phi r vanishes precisely at points where uh, a r minus is zero. Uh, in order to uh, state the uh, characterization, unfortunately, we need another notion, the notion of absolute value type functions. This notion was uh, introduced by Eisenberg and Tribucci, and th these are actually uh, functions defined by Riemann surfaces that somehow non negative functions behave like uh, holomorphic functions in the sense that uh, the zeros are uh, the whole surface or uh, isolated points. Uh, and now we are able to uh, give the characterization, at least the one direction. If you have a minimal surface in a sphere, an exceptional minimal surface, then it turns out that the A invariants are uh, ABT functions, absolute value type functions, and satisfy those uh, equations. I know it doesn't look very attractive, of course, and we have the uh, the good thing is that one somehow can recover the minimal surface from those functions, and uh, the converse is actually this theorem. Uh, looks complicated, but both theorems say the following. An exceptional minimal surface in the sphere is uh, determined by those absolute value type functions up to a multi-parameter uh, family of deformation. And uh, the number of the parameters is just the number of non-vanishing Hopf differential. So let's say uh, what, what this says for uh, the case where all Hopf differentials are zero, which means that we are in the case of super minimal surfaces, it says that the, the, the super minimal surfaces are just rigid, something that was already uh, proved by Chern, uh, Calabi, and uh, Barbosa. Uh, in particular, uh, I have the following remarks. The first remark says that actually the, the geometry of the of an exceptional minimal surface up to the n minus one, remember that n refers to the uh, last uh, normal space, is actually intrinsic. Everything depends on the metric, and only uh, uh, the last normal. Uh, uh, Badl has its own uh, geometry. Uh, another remark is the following, that if you have an, ex an exceptional minimal surface whose uh, first differential does not vanish, then this surface must satisfy the uh, Ricci condition. Uh, of course, as a corollary, we have a similar uh, characterization of uh, super conformal minimal surfaces. In this case, it looks uh, more simple, I would say. Let's uh, skip this. This is the confluence. In this case, of course, we have just one parameter family of deformations. I must say that uh, uh, these deformations actually gener generalize the user uh, uh, associated family uh, in the sense that these deformations are produced by rotating not only the first, uh, the second fundamental form, but all higher fundamental forms. Uh, of course, these results uh, extend previous results by several uh, authors, Eisenberg, Tributz, and so on. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to, uh, the rest of the talk is devoted to the uh, applications. The first application uh, concerns the Ritchie condition. Let me recall again what the Ritchie condition is. Uh, uh, it says that the, this metric is flat which is equivalent to this equation. Uh, 
As an application of the characterization we gave for exceptional minimal surfaces, we are able to confirm Gloss and conjecture for the class of exceptional minimal uh, surfaces uh, lying in all dimensional spheres. Uh, this extends a previous result uh, by Miyaoka that was uh, only for uh, uh, superconformal uh, minimal uh, surfaces. The next application uh, of uh, the characterization is about uh, superholomorphic uh, super curves in, in the uh, in S6. Well, uh, it is known that uh, this sphere carries uh, uh, almost a uh, complex structure, which uh, is defined using the multiplication uh, of the Kelly numbers. Uh, indeed, uh, R7 is just the imaginary Kelly numbers, and uh, we can define a cross product on those uh, imaginary Kelly numbers in this way, using the multiplication. And uh, now, the almost complex structure of the uh, six sphere is just this uh, endomorphism. Note that uh, this J is not, uh, this complex structure is not integrable, and, uh, but it is nearly clear in the sense that it only satisfies this formula. This follows from the uh, derivative of J, which is in this case expressed in this way. Now, what is a, a pseudo-holomorphic curve in S6? It is just a non constant map. Uh, from a, a Riemann surface whose uh, differential is complex linear. Uh, the important thing is that pseudo-holomorphic uh, uh, curves in S6 are not only minimal but also superconformal. And there are uh, four types of such curves, uh, superminimal surfaces in S6, non-superminimal surfaces in S6, I always uh, mean in subsets and co-dimension, and curves that lie in some total geodesic S5 in S6. The last uh, uh, category is not so interesting, of course. They are just the total geodesic. So, using the uh, characterization of exceptional minimal surfaces, we are able to give a, a characterization of uh, uh curves in S6 uh, both in tragic and extragic characterization. We see here that uh, a superconformal surface in S6 is, of, is congruent, all seven congruent, of course, to a pseudo-holomorphic curve of type 1 if and only if its Gaussian curvature satisfies these equations. Or, this is the intrinsic characterization, or if and only if the A invariants satisfy those simple equations. A1 uh, minus and A2 minus are zero, and A2 plus is just the half of A1 plus. Uh, it is uh, congruent to a pseudo-homorphic uh, curve of type 3, even only if this uh, uh, equation is satisfied, and uh, the uh, A invariant satisfy those two equations. Uh, it is worth noticing that this, co this condition looks like the rich condition. They only differ by this uh, coefficient here. Uh, in the rich condition, it is four times the Gaussian curvature. And uh, the last more, uh, more complicated case is of type 3. Uh, so a superconformal surface in S6 is uh, convert to a super uh, to super pseudo-holomorphic pseudo -holomorphic curve of type 3 if and only if those uh, equations are satisfying. So we have a complete characterization of both intrinsic and in extrinsic of pseudo-holomorphic curve in S6 for each uh, type separately. And the, uh, just a remark, the condition that uh, this condition is actually equivalent to the flatness of this metric yeah? while the, this more involved condition is equivalent to the flatness of this metric. So somehow these two uh, types uh, are characterized by a Ricci type condition. And uh, the last application is about the uh, polar uh, surface of a minimal surface sphere. It is, it is normal if you have already lost uh, 
observed that if we have a minimal surface in S3, then the Gauss map describes a new minimal surface in S3, uh, the polar, uh, which is conformal to the original uh, surface. Of course, this uh, uh, construction can be carried out in, more generally for minimal surfaces in uh, odd dimensional spheres. Then, the polar of such a minimal surface, F, is by definition, uh, is defined actually by selecting a unit section of the last normal bundle. Uh, of course, uh, the polar is not defined uh, overall of M unless, uh, of course, in the case, not of course, it's not so trivial, in the case of exceptional minimal surfaces, the polar is defined all over uh, the, uh, the surface M, and this uh, is why the uh, all uh, higher normal bundles can be defined over singular points. The reason is that uh, the singular points in the, in the class of exceptional uh, minimal surfaces are of holomorphic type, so one can extend the, these bundles. Uh, uh, more generally, it was uh, observed by, proved by Miguel Oka that if you start with a superconformal minimal surface and construct the polar F star, then the polar is also not only a minimal surface but also a superconformal surface. And uh, with this, uh, the use method is given by this formula, which means that uh, the polar is conformal to the original uh, surface. And not only that, but also they have, they say, the same, they have the same Hopf differentials. Uh, of course, uh, this construction uh, is somehow kind of pairing. Uh, if you take the polar of the polar, then you will arrive at the original surface. Uh, so, uh, we are interested in uh, superconformal surfaces in spheres that uh, are isometric to the polar. Uh, we call those surfaces just for uh, simplicity, self-dual surfaces. So let's see what happens in, the, in S3. If you have a minimal surface in S3, when it's, is its polar congruent to the minimal surface? This happens only for the case of uh, Clifford Torus. So there is nothing interesting in this case, but uh, let's see what happens in higher codimension. Uh, this proposition says that uh, a superconformal surface is self-dual if and only if it is congruent to its polar surface. And why is this so? Uh, we already said that uh, the surface F and its polar have the same Hopf differential. And remember that somehow Hopf differentials determine uh, uh, exceptional and, and uh, of course, superconformal minimal uh, surfaces. Uh, are there examples of self-dual surfaces? Except uh, torus in S3? Of, there are. All flat uh, superconformal surfaces are self-dual. And not only that, if you have a non-flat superconformal surface in, in uh, an odd-dimensional sphere, of course, that satisfies the Ricci condition, is self-dual if and only if m, the number m is involved, is given there, is of this form. In particular, uh, Lawson surfaces in this sphere, uh, Lawson surfaces are just the surfaces involved in, in, in this conjecture that are uh, direct sum of uh, minimal surfaces in the same associated family. So those surfaces are, that are superconformal are actually self-dual. And uh, uh, we just give a complete characterization of uh, self-dual surfaces uh, in all dimensional spheres. And uh, the interesting thing it, is that it turns out that this property is actually intrinsic. And uh, the theorem is as follows. If you have a, a simply connected surface with Gaussian curvature K and define uh, inductively those functions and assume that those functions are uh, absolute value type functions and satisfy one of those uh, 
uh, equations, then there exists a family of self dual surfaces in those in SN where n is given uh, by those two uh, formulas. And uh, conversely, any other self dual imagine of our surfaces, of our surface arise in this way and is actually uh, given by the associated family of, uh, of uh, a superconformal surface. Uh, in particular, I think very interesting is the case of self-dual surfaces in S5. It turns out, as a corollary of the previous theorem, that uh, a superconformal surface in S5 is self-dual if and only if it is congruent to a pseudo-holomorphic curve of type 3. So, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, here, uh, there are some references related to this uh, subject. Thank you very much.